Uh, the, uh, by the way, the last thing I mentioned on there that uh, it increases the microbial activity, and I'm going to spend a little time on that in just a moment. This is a builder's lot. All the topsoil has been scraped away. The grass is barely chartreuse green trying to grow on it. It's a silty, tight, clay silt soil that just doesn't drain well. So we went out to that and we mowed it. We we're going to put in a, a test garden on that spot. And we mowed it and we spread compost on it. This was in East Texas, so we used Madisonville mushroom compost. It was available not too far away. And we spread it out, and then we took a disc and disked it into the ground and threw ryegrass seed on top of it. And this is what it looked like, is it started to sprout. Now, it didn't receive any fertilizer. Uh, it, didn't, it just got the rainfall that fell as its irrigation, and it's all basically the same soil. But when the ryegrass begins to grow, look at the difference between where there's a lot of compost and where there isn't any compost. And if you go up to the zone right between the two, uh, you can see within two feet, you've got scrawny chartreuse ryegrass plants trying to survive and a foot and a half tall emerald green flopping over ryegrass plants that are, that are thriving. And the only difference there is the presence of that composted organic matter. That's the number one thing that you can do to build your soil. And it, it, we all ought to build our soil before we go out and plant plants. There ought to be a three-day cooling off period for buying plants at the nursery. <laughs> so when you get your flat and you set it on the counter, the man or woman says, have you prepared your soil at home? No, I haven't. I'm going to take these plants and I'm going to set them down back here. And you can come back when you've prepared your soil. Now, the plants would love that. The garden centers would hate that. But uh, people buy plants all the time and haul them home, and they don't have a place to put them. And then they look around and just kind of make a hole and put them in it, and the plants suffer and die and don't ever make it. And then people say they have a brown thumb when, in fact, it's not the color of their thumb. It's the lack of soil preparation that's the problem. And I know you guys. Y'all are master gardeners. You're professional plant collectors. Uh, you have no business buying another plant. You've already got too many at the house. But you go and you see this thing that you got to have, and so here it comes home. Uh, I had one master gardener, uh, a husband, a husband of a master gardener, tell me that whenever his wife left with the Suburban, he called in and reported all the credit cards stolen. So she couldn't bring more plants and dirt home. In a soil are a lot of microbes that do the majority of the work for us in building our soil and making it rich and a good nutrient uh, available place for plants to grow. The first group are the bacteria. Bacteria are the ones that take care of the simple sugars in the plant material. You throw a lettuce leaf on the ground or something like that, bacteria are going to get on it and work on it and break it up real quickly. Uh, they can't digest the more difficult plant material parts, but they can do the simple sugars. They do a lot of good things in the soil. Uh, there are bacteria that kill insects. You've heard of Bt. Bt is a soil bacteria. That's where it's discovered. And we have, we have soil. We have Bt here in Texas. It's not just something. It was discovered in Germany, but we, we have it here. And uh, they also fix nitrogen. They take air that has 78% nitrogen about and they turn that nitrogen into a form that plants can use. And so if you have a plant just sitting in 78% nitrogen air, it's not going to turn green because it can't get that nitrogen. But the bacteria can get it, and they can make it available to the plant. We have bacteria that fight disease. If you've ever used triple antibiotic ointment on a cut on your arm, that is basically the product of soil bacteria, the neomycin types of things. It's coming, it, the, of course, in, in the pharmaceutical industry, they can make it in a vat. They don't have to have a soil bacteria to do it. But soil bacteria make that kind of material for us in the soil. They protect plant roots from disease. Actinomycetes are a lot like bacteria. They're filamentous. They're like a if you imagine a little dandelion seed floating through the air with all those little fibers and it smashing it down, that's kind of an actinomycete under the microscope. And they give soil that rich, earthy smell. Have you ever turned over fresh garden soil and smelled that wonderful, earthy smell of actinomycete flatulence before? That's what you're smelling. They're the ones that do it. They break down some of the harder to break down material like cellulose, corn stalks, 
things like that. Then there's fungi. Fungi are the heavy lifters. They can break down wood, that log that falls in the forest, hair, fingernails, bone. Fungi are able to decompose things that these other guys can't decompose. And they're active in the soil, uh, breaking it down and turning what was once or a living organic matter that died now back into nutrients and humus. Protozoa eat these other guys and they release waste themselves. And it's been estimated that about three-fourths or more of the nitrogen that a plant gets in a natural system comes from protozoan waste. So they're in there eating all kinds of, of hundreds of bacteria a day and so on. They're, they're re recycling those nutrients for us. And then there's even beneficial nematodes that mineralize some of our soil materials. So when you add all this up, in an area about the size, about 1,000 square feet of, of soil, you have about 75 pounds of living ingredients, uh, living material. So that's, that's more, if you look at a pasture full of cows grazing, there's more pounds of livestock under the soil than there are on top of the soil. Uh, if you hold in your hand a little small pile of fresh garden soil, you have more living organisms in your hand than there are people on the face of the earth in that small little bit of soil. Because just a pinch has all these numbers that you see on the slide. And whenever you have living things, they change the environment. This room has more carbon dioxide because you're breathing in and breathing out. It's a little warmer in here because of your body giving off heat and the hot air coming from the platform. <laughs> Just checking to make sure you're awake. I have to check every now and then. Their bodies give off organic acids that would then maybe wash over a mineral soil particle and dissolve some of those nutrients off that mineral particle in the soil and make it available. So microbes in the soil are doing a lot to essentially take care of our plants nutritionally. Now we can feed plants with fertilizer, we can fertilize them and, and give them nutrients, but the natural way that it's done is that the microbes, when we take care of them with organic matter, they feed the plants. And plants even feed the microbes. They release sugars from their roots. And if you look at the number of microbes right around a plant root versus an inch away in the soil, it's tenfold difference. Uh, because plants themselves know I need to take care of these guys and they, they feed them themselves.